I want to start with, let's tell people about our relationship. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, because a lot of motherfuckers feel like we just met each other yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so let's let's talk about our relationship, yeah. how far we go back, and, you know, how long we've stuck together. Yeah, this man, it's what, about 16, 17 years? When it's longer, Nah, probably. it's been longer than it's that. It's almost 20 years at this it's point. It's been damn near 20 years, yeah. 99. Yeah, man. It had been 20 years. Yeah, it had. I remember hearing about- 99, going into 2000. Yeah, I remember getting, you know, I hadn't even signed a deal, but I was running around with OutKast then. I had recorded a few verses that was coming out and used. But I remember hearing about you and Jason. And right. that turn, I don't even know. I, Jason was managing you, but he still held a position. Sure. At, I think with KPs or with some company. No, nah, he, he was at Patchwork. Pat, that's what it was. Yeah, Pat, he still he held a position. Patchwork. And I remember me, me and Jay. Jay was literally rolling up posters. You yeah. know, the, the old posters we had on the Kangos. Right back, on. You were still pimp gang then. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I just remember, man, just hearing about you first and hearing about you working with Toon. And... DJ Swift, Cutmaster Swift, um, Outkast DJ, and Big Boys DJ. Mm -hmm. is, is him and Toon have came up together in this industry. He, he's one of the best DJs in the world and one of the greatest guys. Mm -hmm. But he took me to Toon to hear some of your stuff. Right. And KP let me hear some of your stuff. So before I ever met you, I was just like, man, this dude from the West Side, this little nigga rapping. Yeah. You know, and I think we might have seen each other in the gentleman's club. You still had the gold toothpicks yeah. around that time. It had the Cartier's. Right on. And I know we met again in the office, but I instantly, I just, I was cheering for you. We was from the same community, we the basically. Same, absolutely. Yeah, I'm just like, I got the chill for him, and he just could rap his ass off. That was just, I just, it, I need, I need to be put on, like, I need pressure right to, on. To, to thrive. So in Atlanta at that time, man, a lot of shit just wasn't dope. not wasn't dope lyrically. It was no challenge. It wasn't dope. Y yeah, you know what I'm saying. It, it wasn't, wasn't dope. I mean, no, now don't get me wrong. It was successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. as far as the criteria of what we deem as appropriate, as far as you know, lyricism yeah. and Cadence, just, just patterns, quality production spit. value, it just wasn't dope. Now. I'm happy that those people made the money that they made yeah. to get themselves out of the hood and make a life, make a way for their family. But if you add me, the shit just wasn't dope. It wasn't for my ride. And so in my opinion, it wasn't dope. Um, but. I said it was dope for what it was. It was good. It, it's something for somebody. Yeah, exactly. It's something exactly. for somebody. Exactly. And in the club, that shit's, that shit's the best. Man, my man cuz. But when you clean it up at the house, goddammit, you're not finna exactly, play. Exactly, man. My man cuz say all the time, he say, man, I, he say, you and Tip never allowed yourself to be labeled crump music. No. He, you know, and that's not dissing crump, but he said in the midst, because we came us. up in the midst of the, the growth of crump era, right. we always say, let it be known like we rappers, we MC. That's that's yeah. what we do. It's a Southern perspective. Me, you, and, and Phil Mob at the time came a that's couple right. years later, but, yep. you know, it was a determination there to be, you know, to be, I wanted to be respected everywhere. You know, see, because I took trips back and forth to New York every summer from the time man. I was five to the time I was 15. I myself just knew how they looked at us. Yeah. I had to, I, I, I fought in the summer, you know, all my Puerto Rican, Dominican, and my goddamn, my New York partner. I, we, we fought and, and went back and forth about my accent, about, yeah. you know, our culture, about, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, New York is a real motherfucking arrogant place they're gonna break your ball yeah, yeah if you, you ain't from it. new york you gonna catch hell i don't yeah. give a damn where you from yeah. <laughs> uh especially in the 80s and yeah. early 90s yeah. um so i always more than anything want them to know man man we 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 bite that life just as much as y'all live we got man we could rap just as good as y'all can Absolutely. uh and and Basically, as, as 3000 said at the Source Award, the South got That's something to say. Saying. You dig yeah, what I'm saying? Absolutely. That was always my purpose and intention. Yeah. But, but our relationship has been longevitous in the sense of we've been in different positions. Yeah, in flux, our whole in relationship. Like, like in, our, in our life, in yeah. our careers, yeah. uh, uh, in our success. Like I remember when I when we first met, you were the successful one. You were the yeah, chosen one, anointed by yeah. Outkast. Yeah. Yeah. You you know you had the whole world record. You had the action record. Yeah. Goddamn, like you were 
like the Southern Biggie. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's what motherfuckers was labeling you as. Yeah. Uh, and I was the young nigga trying to come up and just, you know, finding my way. And we were still friends. Absolutely. Absolutely. I never felt like you ever motherfucking, you know, tried to shine on me or do some old high, ca high class cap ass shit. And we moved on to a place where we never loved. scared was a big moment. Never right? scared was a great, a huge it, moment for both of us. Yeah, because I remember like when we got on, when we did that record. I originally did that record with Reese and Bigelow and Bone Crusher. Reese and Bigelow were out of Mississippi, mm -hmm. and Crusher and um, Dan acquired the record. You know, the business of that I don't know, but the record got pulled back as just a Crusher record and me. Mm -hmm. And I remember him calling saying. He he wanted to put tip on. I was like, absolutely, <laughs> like 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 you got to do that. And you had a show or something because okay. I remember your voice maybe was a little hoarse, right. but you came in and gave it to him because they were trying to pressure him to get somebody else on it to get it in. Mm -hmm. And Crushers from Adamsville, from Adamsville, Adamsville, like right. deep on by the Plainville side. And we both like held our nuts, like no, nah, like it's gonna be shouty. <laughs> and you jumped on that record and it it, it kind of exploded. And what was crazy though is. It, it's, as much as I had been anointed by Outkast and I and I appreciated the look, I'll never, you know, I never snub my nose that it it wasn't because we from the same place. It wasn't me, right? You know what I'm saying? Like right. I knew I get on got on the whole world and shocked the world. Right. With, I knew I showed up and held my nuts. Right. You know, I knew with with action, Dre had given me something that was memorable and that I feel like was light years ahead of time because Run the Jewels kind of finds ourselves sure. in that space with that sound. Right. On. But who we were. Mm -hmm. Coming off the streets, never scared really exemplified yeah, that. Yeah. In a it different was the personification way. of what the fuck we represented and what we what we what we intended absolutely, absolutely. to mean absolutely. to the game. Absolutely, you know it what was, I'm saying. It was the, it was it the perfect. Was. And I and I remember when we were doing reaction, the the the, the, the remix, remix to action. action. Yeah, Bun came and got on it. Bun dusted my ass off. He dusted the song off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about, <laughs> and I figured, you know, I pride myself on my lyricism. We, we, you know what I'm saying? That's my thing. I get in that motherfucker and I do my shit. We and, and, and I didn't suck. You not know? neither of us did. We did a but we were both superlative in awe. job. Yeah. <laughs> but we was in awe. I remember when Bun yes. walked in the room, we were we both, were both like, sitting there God like, damn. <laughs> Bun in this bitch, man. man yeah, and man. And he came in that motherfucker, and he served us both. Yeah, and we was just kind of like, okay. Like, like, That's how this going to go, huh? Yeah, but we, right. we learned. So it was these moments that brought us together. I remember, man, like, I, I, I ran with Flip and Hump hard because they gave us education. My whole little clique, grind time. And PSC, we was all loved each other. Sure. Mad bone. It was just genuine love. Yeah, that's right. And I remember them educators. I remember, man, I don't know what that boy said that got on your nerve, but I was just like, well, this ain't gonna go well. <laughs> because, you know, like where we from, you know, my mom told me, you don't, you don't tell the tale to snitch on your friends. And once that's your partner, that's like that's your partner. And we was from the same place. And I just remember, I was like, well, it's probably not gonna go good. <laughs> I'm with the with my dog, like you know what I'm saying. It was just like I seen birthday bash, I seen the signs, I seen drove. I had a, I remember I had bought a pristine, beautiful Bonneville. Still uh -huh. had the skirts on it. Joe still talk about it. He said, right. well, "You really nigga in Atlanta? You rolled up in the Bonneville on Hub Castle and then uh, in Vogue, yeah, because because shit, I, that was the that's shit. That's where we be. from. Yeah, that's what, it, that's what it was. That's what it was. It was lime green. I mean, light green, mint green. It was beautiful. And I just remember now that's lima like, bean green, lima bean, yeah. Lincoln green. Exactly. <laughs> I remember you pulling. I was just like, man, I was like. Dog, off and cut the all head off, man. <laughs> and you did it. And I mean, you know, as much as I can look back and gloat on shit like that. Now like he was a good dude. He's a good dude. I mean, I really, I, you know what the odd thing is? I never had an opportunity to ever get to know him personally. Man, he really is a good dude. And, and it's like boxing. You know, it's like fighters fight. You know, sure. it's like, but I knew in that moment, like, like, like this nigga still is yeah. probably going to be my partner for life because I made the decision, like, not made the decision, but just as much as like, I couldn't, I couldn't get in the way of it because I knew you at that. Cause I know me. Right. Like once I'm, once I'm now, I'm now. Okay, it's just finna go down. Right. We'll figure it out later. And it's finna. Yeah. But I, I understood it, and I, so I couldn't say you was wrong. Sure. But it just put me in a position of just understanding that this guy, between the music we made, between how friendly we are, between how our homeboys click up, 
Like it's just this it's probably gonna be it a basically, life basically thing. this shit is is entrenched in 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 genuine love and respect. Absolutely. <laughs>